from the age of four on up, I wanted to be the president. I wanted to be a big time hacker. When I was growing up, I wanted to be a soccer player. I wanted to be an astronaut. We spend three quarters of our life in our career. You want to leave a footprint on the planet, and you want to really look at what will be meaningful for you. Students have a lot of options in front of them, and sometimes it's difficult to narrow all those options. It's challenging to make that one decision that will change your life. Students can be overwhelmed. They often feel the pressure. I'm competing with every other college senior from every other school in America and overseas. A lot of positions want three to five years of experience, which is hard to get um, while you're in school. It's a little bit exasperating, uh, honestly. You have this expectation once you graduate that you're going to be doing all these things that you really want to do. My biggest fear is getting rejected a lot. Not succeeding where I have my passion. My biggest fear is that I'll just fall short. I talk to a lot of students. They seem to be a little bit frazzled uh, about the economy, about getting a job. What are you actually teaching the students that's preparing them for a career? Well, there are so many sure. tools out there today, and students have to take advantage of those tools. And they have identified me as a recruiter at a company that they are interested in. As Ready you can see, it? 160 messages. We find the students that have the right skill sets we need and then target our efforts into those schools. Our overall workforce plan always is composed of university hires. This is basically the future Smart. you're Smart. looking at right here. Our resume is just a snapshot of what we have to offer. Sometimes you get knocked down and then get back up. Hopefully in a year or two if I'm somewhere in D.C. I will be doing design work for an environmental consulting company. And I would love to be back in college with the opportunity of knowing what I know now. Yo, how y'all doing? <laughs> right on. Yeah, there's, there's a 415. It's like, this, this is whole day has been so awesome, hasn't it? Let's get the hell out of here. Let's go get a drink. It's on Jeff Kogan. Let's go do it. Scrambling through the deck already. Who's here because they're um, starting a student recruitment program? You're starting one. Right on. Who's here because they have one? Right on. The rest of you... Just strap the hell in, because it's about to get real, I'm telling you. So it turns out, 79% of employers around the world hire students and recent graduates. Who knew? In fact, y'all are going to be hiring about 100,000 people just this month, which is fascinating, of course. But let me tell you, we got a whole generation of kids that are driving blind. They have no idea what skills you need. We got a bunch of employers that are still driving blind when it comes to recruiting students. It, it baffles me that, that we still show up at the same 10 golden schools trying to find the same group of students. We set up our booth, and we think our swag and our lighty balls are going to be the thing that attracts this next generation of students. That's what we're doing. I'm here to show you a different road, right? One with no speed limit, and no one else is on it. A road from 10 schools to 24,000 plus schools around the world. A road that leads to kids that maybe aren't even in college. They're on edX, taking Harvard's famous CS50 online for free, or they're on Coursera, learning all the skills that they are figuring out that they need. I'm not going to talk about millennials. In fact, I'm a little tired of it. No offense to 90% of you in the room. Millennials started Facebook. And that's great. The world's open and connected. What I want to talk to you about is Generation C. I call it Generation C. I'm convinced that the next generation of kids, folks like that are graduating college now and in the spring, kids like my own two teens who are looking at colleges now, comprise the next great creative generation, Generation C. And they have their geolocation off. 
but I think they're going to change the world. It's folks like this guy, Jasper Eat Singh. What's going on, man? Only college student in this place coming up in here, and it's a smart move. I'm going to tell you why in a little bit. It's people like Daquin Newton. This kid, I've been watching his career path for years. Sometimes I tell people, I've been tracking in the four and a half years I've been at LinkedIn, hundreds of students, college students, and employers, many of you I know. This kid told me, Rob, I'm gonna, you're going to see me on Wall Street. I'm going to be driving a Ferrari and living large. Daquin's a first-generation college student, graduated from NC State with a finance degree. Guess where he's at now? Teach for America called him and said, Daquin, forget about Wall Street. It will always be there. Come work at inner city schools that are, ha have a high need for teachers. So he's committed two years of his life. And I talked to him the other day, literally, and he's like, I don't know if I can do this. And I said, let me show you what the team at LinkedIn has done here. Let me show you the outcomes of people that work for Teach for America after they do their tour of duty. Go look at it. It's, a, it's absolutely astounding where these folks end up. I want to tell you about kids like my son Shane. Shane is an interesting guy, right? I got two teenagers. One sort of like Alex P. Keaton. He's a little bit more like me. <laughs> but let me tell you something about Shane and what he represents. First off, I gotta, I gotta confess, he read my script for this talk before I got in the plane. Told me it was a complete piece of garbage, rewrote it, and literally 90% of what I'm saying, he wrote. He's the first high school kid on LinkedIn to write a post that's been read by 20,000 people with hundreds of comments and 20,000 views more than the first quarter of people here. The other thing is Shane's already using the new revolutionary products that our higher education team has just recently launched. And if you haven't seen these, they're going to blow your mind away. He's using University Finder to figure out what types of schools would be good for him. Shane's a junior in high school. He's looking at schools right now based on actual career outcomes of 313 million plus people. He's also using decision boards. So he's taking this information from these schools and actually being able to share it with people that can not just influence decision, but give him advice. All right? In 1987, when I, went to, when I was looking at colleges, my mom, who was a secretary in a hospital, said, Robbie, these guys are driving these awesome cars. You should think about health care. You should do that. I have a degree in healthcare administration. I'm in a job called manager of content marketing, which didn't even exist until like a couple of years ago, I think. Kids like JD, my son that's looking at schools right now. So I'm literally talking to my wife and my son JD just, just recently. Of course, I'm a man. So I butt into the conversation and say, listen, I've been working at LinkedIn for almost five years. I know this inside and out. Now, I've been married 20 years. And I still butt into a conversation that my wife is having with my son. I'm just saying, what was I thinking? But of course, I had the natural question. How much is this going to cost? Is it worth it? He's looking at Georgetown, right? Last I checked, it was $62,597 on average <laughs> per year. Now, LinkedIn's been good to me, but not that good. <laughs> in fact, the number of people with degrees since my brother, who graduated in 1979 and now, makes it ultra competitive for any kid. Because unlike my brother Jim, who got out of Providence College, got in his little beetle, with his cut off shorts and his no shirt driving down the highway, gets pulled over by the cops. Hey, it'd be great if you could put that bear in the back seat. Keep it on ice, but put, keep it in the back seat. He had job offers all over the place. 
The world's different. J.D. Shane, Jasper, and all these people are going to be competing with not just the people sitting in the car next to them, but everybody else in the world. And the cost of a degree has increased over a thousand percent. Now I'm pretty sure that Wade Burgess and Dan Shapiro and Jeff Weiner and my boss Jeff Kogan don't care where I went to school. What they care about is what I'm selling or delivering to them. I could be wrong. Then, of course, I mentioned to my wife and my son, who's now staring at me, both of them with eyes like glaring at me, like, shut up, Rob. There's over a trillion dollars in student debt now, guys. We really need to do a cost-benefit analysis. This is such an emotional decision. Is anyone going through this, by the way? Anyone have kids looking at colleges quite yet? A few of you. It's just a matter of time for the rest of you. All right? Where you go to school, will it matter? I had to bring this up because I couldn't stop talking, obviously. So in North Carolina, where I live, we've got a great elite private school, Duke University. We've got Carolina. Any Tar Heels here? No? And we've got North Carolina State University, which is a state school, right? Well, they have different costs associated with them. JD would love to go to Duke, and he's applying to Duke. I'm praying he gets into Carolina. <laughs> I gotta be honest about it. But you know what? The median mid-career salaries tell a different story. They say that, well, if you go to Duke or Stanford or an elite private school, you're gonna be better off. Maybe. But is the cost benefit that significant? Is my, after my paycheck net of my student loan, where I've got a crushing amount of debt, going to paint a different picture for me? Then I say, what about your major? You know, does it matter if, what you major in? If you're Jaspery, and I know you're a computer science major, everybody wants to hire you because there's 16 jobs to every one CS or double E person that's graduating next year, right? Well, I did a snapshot, naturally, of the audience at Talent Connect. And I'll ask you, how much does it really matter what your major is? If you're not a STEM student in computer science, environmental engineering, or what have you, your business, psychology, journalism, social sciences, does it really matter? Did anybody here go to college for talent acquisition? Anybody? <laughs> so. I am, love LinkedIn. You know why? Because we've got these crazy data people. Sohan Murdy, who is just amazing, and Christine Schmidt, all these people that can slice and dice this information. Stuff I couldn't even get into the program to look at it. You know what I mean? And this is what you're going to hear in an upcoming blog post about the most hard to find skill sets, the skills that are actually getting members hired, the top 25. Note that one is a recruiter. And of course, you can imagine all the data scientists getting together, recruiters in there, which is it, is that, let's double check that. So good for all you. But the other are scripting skills, Python programming, mobile development, right? The interesting thing about it is US members, about a million US members in the sample that we looked at that are graduating, only 1.2% of them have any of the top five schools. Jaspreet Singh has two to three of those. He's in pretty good shape. But I said, JD, you're not going for computer science. It's going to be a little bit difficult. Let's play a game. Anybody want to play a game? I do. There's six kids up here. Anybody hiring technical talent? Yeah, you're hiring computer science people, software engineers? Right? What's, what company? Redfin? Yeah. Hot, man. Hot, hot thing. So out of these people here, um, let's go ahead and, and figure out how we're going to choose which student we're going to want to recruit. How would we go about that? What's the first question we want to ask? What's their GPA? Laszlo Bach, if he was here, he would come up here and say, GPA is not a descriptor of someone's future performance. So I can't even tell you what it is anyway. I'm not going to tell you. What else might we look at? Where they go to school? I'm not going to tell you where any of these people went to school. What the degree is in? 
Each one of these people are graduating with either a computer science degree or a double computer science double E degree, either in the spring or sooner. Yes? Projects. Great question. So I can tell you that each of them has done an internship at a prestigious startup or a startup that has legitimately given them effective skills that they can prove out to you, for sure. Some of them, two of them actually, have verifiable projects that they've worked on um, and verifiable uh, courses that aren't even in the confines of their major. They're done on either edX, Coursera, or MindSumo. A great question. So let me get to the heart of the matter. Generally speaking, based on your own questions, only two of these people would be people in general, or specifically I should say, that you would actually look at. Jaspri, who goes to Berkeley, and Lavisha, who goes to Cornell. You would not look at Jordan, who goes to Ithaca College, which is a mile away from Cornell. You would not look at Kimberly, who's a UConn, who's got a 4.0 out of 4.0 at UConn. And Josh at Oregon, and Alex at UNC, University of North Carolina, Charlotte. I'm glad you would look at them, by the way, right? So here's some leads for you. So I'm done with this conversation with my sons and my son and my wife. And my kid says, Dad, where are the keys to the car? I said, JD, are you talking about the car that I pay for? The car that I maintain and let you borrow? That car? He said, Dad, where are the keys? Four years ago, I was at the Palace Hotel, and in this confines of the halls of the Palace Hotel, people started talking about students. We had like a million. We had 900 jobs or less for students. I'm happy to report that now we've got 39 million plus students and recent graduates on LinkedIn. We've got over 850,000 jobs at our entry level or um, internships. So we've increased our capability to attract students to the platform. And on top of it, the icing on the cake is that they're the most engaged and fastest growing cohort on LinkedIn. So let's get real for like a second. Can we talk? I truly feel that we're driving our strategies for campus recruitment in a way that are just blinding. The two biggest factors that you've told us our most, our most recent Global Trends Research study, and you should read this thing, indicates that cost and competition are the two biggest factors for hiring students. Now. If we keep looking at the same schools and the same people, we're going to continue to increase the cost. And we're going to be just competing with each other more and more. Right? Just, just a concept. So what I'm saying is that we need to drive what I would contend is a Ferrari parked in our driveway. It's idle and relatively lifeless. And we're not doing anything to ignite that. I think we need to gas that whip and drive it. And we need to think about ways where we can connect right, with students more broadly, consider a much larger swath audience of people, and then go ahead and create content that's relative to their career. So we can get the Shanes of the world who will go out there and experiment with projects and, and posting on LinkedIn or whatever you have in your mind that can help them in their career. Now, I could give you the details of how to do this, but what I, what I have, as you know, is I've got the head of the yellow pages with me today, Melissa Hooven, to tell you exactly how to make this happen. Let's give it up for Melissa. Wow. Let me get that book. Let me, let me look it up, guys. <laughs> I, when, I, when I first, you know, when I first it was like yellow pages, we're going to talk about this. It's kind of like really, <laughs> but I'm really excited to have you. Take you actually cra like crashed my campus here too a couple weeks ago, so it's nice to see you um, at our office. 
Um, my name is Melissa Hooven. Um, yes, this book, um, I'm actually gonna tell a quick story. Um, so my gram grandma and both my parents had a small business and they actually advertised in this business, in this book. And when I told them that I was gonna go to the Yellow Pages, they laughed and you know, told me their stories about advertising in this book, but this book still brings a lot of money for our business in. Um, I'm gonna tell you another story about student recruiting that I thought was just fascinating and actually happened a couple weeks ago. Um, I got invited to speak at a local college um, that, this microphone is so loud. Um, <laughs> I got to, asked to speak at a local college is a class that was doing digital media. And the students were sitting there and like bright eyed and I was telling them all about like my background working in a technology companies. And the students, the advisor said, go through the pitches and pitch it to Melissa and let her like tell us what she thinks of the final projects. And so after I like got to talk about my background and like the companies I've built and internship programs I've built, a student in the back raises his hand and says, hey, d do you think we can spend like the last 15 minutes talk about resume writing and interviewing and internship searches and job like searching and, and like then another student raises and another student raises their hand and all of them wanted to use me for <laughs> interview advice and resume writing and how do they get an internship. So instead of me looking at their final projects, I spent four hours till the late hours of the night helping them just kind of reconsider their career choices, reconsider an internship, and help them figure out how to write a resume. And what we don't realize is that so many people and so many students just don't have work experience. And so we're going and saying we're gonna hire them based on the college and the GPA and their, and their program that they're in. And we don't realize that what Jeff said earlier um, on stage in the keynote is that we need to start to consider talent. Oh, I have a clicker. Yes. Guys, I love it. It's, we're, oh, love it. We get to consider talent now differently. And Jeff Wiener said this morning that when he goes to hire talent, he looks at them for three things. Dream job, fit, and passion. And so those six students on the board would have never gotten your attention if you would have gone the old way. And these students are sitting in our local colleges and we're not even considering them because they don't come from the top 10 golden, golden eggs. What we need to do is start considering talent differently and start looking at colleges and students for what they can bring for the future, not what they've done. And so we need to take a different approach to talent acquisition as we're interviewing and working with them. So let me think I'm gonna click through this one. Oh, another thing that came up on my uh, there's a student ebook that LinkedIn just uh, uh, published. I think you guys are all going to get copies of it, which I highly suggest you read. It said that 21 million, million students are on the job market considering their career right now. 21 million students. That's a really big talent pool. That's a, I mean, if I had 21 to choose from, I think I'd not be in my uh, position. <laughs> It'd be easy to hire. So. I sat down on the keynote actually and flipped open my computer and in that I said LA, I picked two schools and I just said student, just some quick searches and 11,000 search results came up on my feed. 11,000, I don't even have to go to a career fair. I can just go message them and start an internship program and we can do that virtually at our fingertips right now. So we have to consider things differently. We have to consider how we do our talent acquisition, how we're interviewing them, and really use Jeff Wiener's approach, and then also consider talent that's local. Connect. This is really important. Students these days are at their fingertips. They're on their mobile phones. They're connected to the university platform that Rob showed you a few minutes ago. They're looking at your company all the time. And we're at career fairs and we have the little swag, they go home, they do their research, they're on LinkedIn, and we're not connecting back. And they all have profiles, 11,000 of them in LA had profiles. And I have, I have, I'm not emailing them. So we need to connect differently. I strongly suggest, if you can, put a university recruitment career page together. I think that's very important to push out relevant content and also list openings that's, that's eligible, A for entry level, or also internships. Um, and another thing is to connect through LinkedIn. Um, connect in through a marketing campaign, email them directly, get in touch with them. Also add on your company page, you can kind of, if you have a, you guys should all purchase a big page. 
But on a couple of those tabs, you know, you always put your sales recruiting, your technology recruitment, but you're not talking about university recruitment. And there's 21 million out there. I consider that a really good talent pool that we're not capturing. So I think it's about kind of positioning yourself with content and making some, bear, some entry points into your company. And also being personal. One of the great things that I did, and also at YP, if you guys don't know, I don't have a big internship program. I just don't. Um, I came in, I was tasked to build an internship program essentially from, from scratch, and our corporate office helped do a lot of that. But I actually took over the program, and we took 14 interns from all down, up and down the West Coast, and we took them through a 12-week program. And it wasn't anything spectacular. It was, you know, a small and intimate group of people, and we're all still on an email chain, and we share photos of the travels we've done over the summer, and they still text message me all the time, and it's, they're incredible kids. But through the 12-week program, what we did is we did um, bi-monthly lunch and learns, where they got to sit down with an executive over lunch and just have a conversation about career, career pathing. How do you write your resume? Like they were talking to me at this, at this class, they were able to talk to an executive. So I gave them frontline exposure to the executive team. The other thing I did was um, I gave them full access to our YP engineering blog. And I said, hey, why don't you guys post? And they post about the projects and the people and all these experiences that they met. So they kind of got to connect back into the world and write down their experience, which is incredible. Um, another thing, um, after each of our lunch and learns, I kept asking them, I would go sit and lunch and learn and say, what more can I do for you? What else, what else do you guys want? So a hackathon came on the board. And I said, screw it. Let's do a hackathon. I'm like, I have a tech team of 400. I think I can figure this out. So I went right into our engineering team and I said, hey guys, help me out, let's set it up, let's do a mini hackathon. And what we did was they built products that they thought were relevant or next generation to YP. YP, yes, is a digital company too, so <laughs> we'll get there. Um, so they got to develop great products and launch them and then send, we had our executive team sit there and they got to present their products, what they think the future of our company is, to our executives. And also, I didn't give them like part-time work. I put them right into our engineering floors, right into the product floors. They weren't like part-time workers. Everyone confuses an intern with a part-time worker. And, and I'll have a full discussion on that one day with you guys. But I put them right in the product and technology floor and they were working on our real platforms. They were on our APIs, they were in our database team. You know, they were doing front-end code, they were doing mobile apps. So they got real-world experience that's now sitting on their resume. It wasn't just like this little internship and you know, they like were data filing and, and like you, you as a company didn't better them. So one of the questions I always want you to ask yourselves as you're creating an internship program is what could you do for them? There's 21 million of them and they're so eager and they're fresh and they're hungry and here we are sitting you know, five, 10, 15 years into our career with all this experience and, and they were working at a hamburger shop you know, to pay for their way to college and we're not considering them because they're not at the top 10 schools. So, just to recap, Rod loves Ferraris. <laughs> I would probably take a Range Rover. <laughs> so, one, consider talent. Broaden up your spectrum of where you're, you're searching for talent. Open up a map. Put 25 miles in each radius. Go to LinkedIn, search data. Where's those 11,000 students for you and get in front of them. Go to those campuses and those career fairs. You don't have to you know, fly around the states to these you know, big top 10 schools. But what you can do is go into your local communities and get involved at their career fairs. And then secondly, what you can also do is a little nugget of information is they have associations within those universities and you can partner with them, whether it's writing or film or production or technology or women's engineering. Go tie yourself to an, organ to an association if you don't have money to set up a, an internship program or even a career booth. So consider talent. Two, create career content. So make sure your LinkedIn page is up to date. Add some university recruitment. Get on your social profiles and, and get the word out there. Have a career page um, for your company that is really focused on university recruitment and start the conversation, even on a LinkedIn email basis. 11,000 came up. I mean, I think I'm, I could quickly make an email and get some people interested in YP. Um, and then connect um, and, that, and then also ride your whip. <laughs> Rob's a great graphic person. So 
Rob, do you want to come help me up on stage here? Come on. Yeah, you know what? One thing that um, <laughs> one thing that strikes me that and thank you so much. Oh, you're Thanks. welcome. I appreciate it. Um, one thing that strikes me is like you know I'm always reading Laszlo Box, um, how to get hired at Google. Yeah. We should all go do that. We should like go party and have fun tonight at uh, at the pier. But we should take time to all just write an article and saying this is what's going to take to get hired at my company. Right. Um, thank you so much for for I'm coming. I'm not it. quite done. Why do you got to do this to me? <laughs> I just wanted you up on stage. Why? Just a little bit of nerves. Um, you've known me for some years. I, I have. You've crashed pretty much every single one of my companies that I've I worked have. at. And I can't believe I went, I did go to Glendale. You did on a really hot day. To see the yellow pages. By the way, <laughs> the company's doing a billion dollars in print and a billion dollars in digital. So they're completely legit. Yeah. But you've, what's on your mind? <laughs> you also know me to do some really crazy things in talent acquisition. Yeah, I do. So I've presented about a thousand offer letters in my career, yeah. probably through email. Oh yeah. But I've never done it on stage. And Jaspreet's sitting in our audience. I see where this is going. <laughs> you didn't see this coming, did you? So no. Jaspreet the whole time thought he was going to come up here and do a QA, and I, I I paid for him to come down here, and I said, oh, you please do this Q and A with me on stage. Um, but YP actually wants to hire him. So. Good for you, hey, Jaspreet. Get up here, man. Come get your offer, dog. So I'm doing it the electronic way, a hard drive. Your offer letter's on here. I'm going to tell you right now. Congratulations on your offer, by the way. Thank you so much. Yeah, enjoy. Hey, you better get him right out of here. You got like 90 people. You're going to hire him, too. Yeah. So much. Yep. He's going to think it over because I know there's a lot of other technology companies in the, in the room that are probably going to poach him on the way out. <laughs> really, really, thank you so much. You're you, welcome. You better get out of here. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much for joining us. Appreciate you coming at 415.